Good evening, everyone. We are in week five of Hug It Out. I remember, I'm remembering back when I started this, I thought we would be kind of done. And we are nowhere near even knowing what that looks like. So that's a really interesting place to be, at least for me, maybe collectively in the world. So yes, welcome to week five. So we, I am here every Wednesday evening at eight o'clock offering a place for us all to come together and connect and restore during this time of a global pandemic. I'm delighted to be here. And this is actually happening because uh, I have, we have been surrounded by some very, very generous and loving healers and therapists who are giving and gifting their time to us. So, so, so grateful to those who have given their time to us. Um, the past few weeks, have we've had a variety of different types of people on, from trauma therapists to Chinese medicine movement healers to a beautiful presencing exercise in belonging. Uh, I have to admit someone out of the waiting room. So there we go. And if you're looking for a replay or uh, interested, it's on replay at my website, which is nalucenter.com, N-A-L-U-Center.com. Uh, some updates on the news this week. Uh, not too much has really changed uh, since last week, but I did read this article that, I, that kind of tickled me. So I want to give you a little bit of what that article is about. So this was an article in CNN Business, and it was talking about the trends of shoppers. So week one of COVID, hand sanitizers and soap and disinfectants were flying off the shelves. Week two was toilet paper. Week three was spiral hams and baking yeast. And curious, would anyone like to take a guess of what week five is bringing off the shelves? If you would like to speak, you're welcome to press the space bar and that will unmute you momentarily. But week five, what do you think might be flying off the shelves? Pasta. Pasta, great guess. Alcohol. Alcohol. <laughs> that is hilarious. Good guess, but it's not alcohol. Jigsaw puzzles. Oh, great guess. It's Big not what jigsaw. Puzzles? Jigsaw puzzles, oh, that's jigsaw. what Lori said. <laughs> not jigsaw puzzles. Any other guesses? Tears and beans. That's what's missing in our grocery store. Wow. Tortillas and beans. Tortillas and cans of beans. No black beans. None. Wow. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Okay. That's it. That's not it. But that's <laughs> another great guess. Here is what is flying off the shelves on week five. Hair clippers and hair dye. That just tickled me like you don't even know. But there was also this other great article about this husband and wife who are in a tiff because uh, the wife bought, speaking of black beans, just cans and cans and cans of black beans. And she buried them in the backyard and she wouldn't tell her husband where they were located. So he was in the middle of making whatever, his burrito. And he's like, hey, honey, where are all the black beans? And she's like, I buried them. And I'm not telling you where they are in case things go south. So uh, yeah, it's so fun reading a different kind of news this week. It's a little, yeah, having a little fun with that. So great guesses. I think jigsaw puzzles were up there though. And alcohol too, for sure. Probably like number two of those early weeks because yeah, there's a lot missing there too. <laughs> Uh, today, my homeschool um, education was, for me, a very, very accurate account of why the video killed the radio star. And I feel officially old telling my eight-year-old why the video killed the radio star, if anybody knows that song. I see one person smiling at me, so 
All right. Great. That's a song. Video killed the radio oh, star. Oh, yeah. oh, Video yeah. killed the. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. No, anyway, my eight year old uh, busts out that tune and she's having a great idea, but then she's like, Mom, I don't get it. Why does the video kill the radio star? And anyway, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, oh my gosh, how. I kind of feel a, a little teary talking about our next guest. So our next guest is a fine, fine gentleman whom I met back in 2013 during the Hakomi Immersion Program. At that point, uh, this gentleman, he'd already been a psychotherapist for about 20 years. Correct me if I'm wrong in any of this. He already worked as a graduate advisor during the LEOS program or for the LEOS program. It was a, a master's program for therapists and family therapists to go through. He'd already studied nonviolent communications and mindfulness. He'd already worked in jails. He'd already been a teacher. And I'm like, what are you doing here? So welcome Mark Goodman to hug it out. It is such a tremendous blessing to have you. Thank you. It's good to be here. And I've been following this, by the way. I haven't been able to um, um, show up on on um, on the Wednesdays, eight o'clock until now. But I've been watching it afterwards, so I feel like I kind of know you a little bit. <laughs> um, know some I, people are familiar, and so it's nice to yeah. have, have a sense of um, what's been going on here and what you guys have been talking about. Um, so it's been nice. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I'm so glad that you've caught some of the replays and I mean, this type of environment is so you, I mean, I'm remembering too during our training, how whenever you spoke, you just brought the room into this silent jaw opening uh, depth of presence that was such a gift that you offered to all of us. And I remember thinking, who is this guy? What does he read? What magazines does he subscribe to? Like, I just need to get into whatever, whatever he's doing, whatever you were doing, Mark. I was so inspired by how you held people um, emotionally uh, within the room and then also with yourself just this unfaltering compassion that you give. So no surprise that you're a big fan of people like Tara Brock and Mark Williams and that you send me yummy clips of those, mm. <laughs> those speakers. So um, I'm curious if you'd be willing to tell us a little bit about yourself and what, what, you, what, what do you love about what you do and how you work? Sure. Well, I'm a psychotherapist. I practice in Queen Anne in Seattle. Um, I see individuals and couples. That's what I do. Um, and what I love is that after 20, it's 20 years this year that I've been doing this. After 20 years of doing this, I still wake up in the morning and I can't wait to get to work and I'm inspired by my work. And, and I feel so um, grateful and lucky that I get to sit with human beings beings every day who are um, trying to connect with their deepest essences and live an authentic life. And uh, someone once asked me, like, um, at, a, at a party, they said, you're a psychotherapist, so all you do all day is listen to people with problems. Like, how do you, how do, you do that without, like, you know, tearing your hair out? And I remember saying, if I thought that's what I was doing, then I couldn't do it. But what I'm really doing is sitting across from these beautiful human beings that I get to um, see clearly and get to um, get to know intimately and get to walk with them um, through a piece of their journey. And that's a sacred trust. And I love that. And um, one of the things about Hakomi, one of the, the um, first practices we, we work with in Hakomi is this practice of loving presence. And it's a practice of when you sit across from someone where do you put your attention? 
And like traditionally psychotherapists put their attention on what's their diagnosis and what's wrong with them. And, you know, how do we, how do we fix them? And I'm going to call me. It's like, what about this other person's being nourishes you and fills you up? And I, I think intuitively I might've been doing that a little bit, but then Hakomi gave me deeper permission to like, just um, people's essences are so beautiful. And when I can see that and take that in, I just feel filled up. It's like seeing a beautiful sunset or something. It's not so much beauty. And then, um, and then to reflect that back to people. So that's a piece of what I do is kind of like really try to see what is so beautiful about each person I meet and then to provide a mirror so they can see themselves from a, in a clearer light. Um, so, um, and I think I will say one more thing. I, 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 I would never have been a thera therapist, I think, if I didn't have a mindfulness practice. I started practicing mindfulness in 1995, I think. And um, I think that was part of the journey back coming into being a therapist and just knowing how to sit with all of who I am, my human, you know, all my humanity or learning how to sit with my fullness of my humanity, the pain and the sorrow and the joy. Um, helped me then learn to sit with others pain and sorrow and joy um and that practice goes on so funny i have to say jendi i really like i'm like half embarrassed and half appreciative of all these things you're saying about what i've done with my life because i feel like it's still such a work in progress it's still i don't i don't i mean i feel like there's so much i still i, I still falter i still don't know what i'm doing at times i still like don't know how to be present sometimes i i am um, I'm still learning and my clients keep teaching me. Like, I think I like something about this job is you can't cheat. You know, if you start to cheat, then the a client shows up and shows you where you haven't been doing your work. And so it's very humbling to, to, to like, and I feel very humble about, um, you know, I just keep doing my work, keep showing up and hoping that that's um, useful to people and helpful. So, I feel very much still like a beginner when I, when I enter into a conversation with someone, I'm still learning so much. And I think I love that about my job too, when I just keep learning. Um, I was thinking um, one last thing. <laughs> I was thinking last week, Kimberly, when you were talking about your, how you follow the thread, you know, the thread, you, you kept talking about following some body thread and, and then it releases eventually if you keep following it. And I work very much like that. It's very Hakomi and, you know, it's very, um, you don't have a plan. You kind of like, it's very like, you have to give up your plan. You have to give up thinking you know anything and be surprised along that journey. But I love this idea that came to me when I was listening to you last week that like all these people, like I feel like there's a labyrinth inside of every person. And our, my job has been to follow that labyrinth to the luminosity of the soul or the heart. You know, and it feels like, you know, if you just are listening and attuning, eventually you can get to this, this beautiful luminosity that maybe is someone's essence. And I think that's the, that's just the beauty and the sacredness of the work that I try to do. So that's a little bit about what I do. It's hard to, it's hard to sometimes give it words. But. Following the labyrinth to the luminosity of someone's essence. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's just how you talk. <laughs> it reminds that's me, what I'm talking about. What and it, reminds like, me, it reminds me of, th this was so helpful. My, I have a 13-year-old um, daughter right now, and, um, and when I met her for the first time, a minute old, that's what I saw, you know? There was nothing else but her luminosity, right? And everyone has that. And then it gets buried by pain and trauma and all that stuff, but it's still there. Right, so I'm hearing that when you are sitting with someone, you're primarily looking for their light. Yeah. Yeah, and then reflecting that right back to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have had a few times been a client of yours during deepening skills in Hakomi and 
sitting in the seat of being your client is a delight. It is this sweet bubble of full acceptance. Like I can bring you whatever ugly part that I would call something ugly, or I can bring any rageful part or any uh, traumatized part your way. And I, I would always trust, and I've always felt this with you, Mark, this safety net and this acceptance and this sense of like, everything's okay. Like no judgment coming from you and no agenda coming from you, this massive place of allowing and this massive place of trusting both yourself and me when I've been with you. So I, I've felt how good that feels from you. And ultimately I think it's trusting life. I think Kimberly talked about this too last week that life wants to move toward wholeness and I don't have to make it happen and you don't have to make it happen. I just have to get out of the way and let life move in the way it needs to move. And I think more and more as I do this work, I trust life more and more, you know, and I just have to let the ride the wave of life and not get in the way. So I'm feeling into what may want to happen next. And I'm curious if we want to invite in the voices of everyone else here with us. And Mark, I'm curious if you would like to perhaps ask a question or create an invitation around how we bring their voices in. Again, totally optional. No one needs to press the space bar and speak. You don't have to do anything. It's completely optional, but we are all here together at the same time. You know, we're in a circle-ish together holding each other. And so we thought it would be sweet to, to hear you. And I think I, I can just add to that, just say I would love to hear your voices. I mean, that's the, the beginning of finding the essence that we're talking about through the voice. You begin to follow that thread. And I would also love to hear what's, what's in the room, <laughs> this room we're creating, this metaphorical room we're creating, what's here? I know we're all, um, you, everyone is, we're, we're responding to a, a collective event in the world and it's affecting all of us. And, you know, I, I, I had a hard day today. I just felt bored and restless and just not out of sorts and, um, you know, and nothing for no reason and maybe for every reason, you know, <laughs> that we're living in strange and unique times. So I'd love to just a few words of just where where is everyone today and how are how is everyone meeting this this moment that we're in? And again, if you don't feel like speaking, that's fine. But it'd be nice to hear. the offering I have tonight is I'm hoping to like maybe um, weave in your voices into what I offer. So anyone that would love like to. Um, offer where they are, that would be helpful and great and a gift. I'm gonna speak, hello, Mark. It's hey, so nice to see you. So um, where I am, I'm at in a really calm place. I just got out of the infrared sauna and cold shower and <laughs> ended my day. Um, and this is just sweet to have this time together and to be able to follow you. Um, yeah, I, I, I have had hard moments through this as well. This af most of today was not one of them. I was definitely grouchy this morning and I, I was able to move through it, but today has been um, some really good quality time. So I am not feeling the bad effects. I'm feeling the silver linings today. Feeling some ease, it sounds like. Yes. Yeah. Now I'm unmuted. <laughs> oh, Hi. Yeah. Hi, uh, Mary. I'm Mary. Yeah. Um, 
this is wild. It's, and I just wanted to thank Jendi for welcoming, welcoming me and all of us. And thank you, Mark. Um, um, new to this platform, but um, I, I'm sort of feel like I'm sort of like a skipping stone and um, kind of bouncing from, I'm kind of, today is kind of like got restless today. Yesterday I, I play music and yesterday um, got to go and, and sing at a facility where I used to work, um, assisted living and memory care. And it was a really surreal experience. Um, standing out in a gazebo and singing to a, the side of a building. And there were a few residents outside and uh, windows were open. I couldn't see faces. Um, so it was a performance unlike any, um, but the closest to, to live performance that we've been able to do. I, um, we've been posting videos of our duo and doing music. Um, music is my muse and, and my, my grounding force. Um, um, so, yeah, I, I, um, I love the, the image of looking for a thread of um, like a labyrinth and, and I'm sort of, that's going through my head right now and I'm thinking about um, my own struggles and, and trying to, you know, be present and my own work in therapy and, and um, uh, instead of thinking about a bunch of frayed pieces of twine, I'm thinking about one thread. And uh, um, I'm as frustrated as I am with not being with human beings in three dimensions. It's I'm seeing this new community of and just faces being sitting here tonight. This wouldn't have happened if there wasn't a pandemic. I wouldn't have. <laughs> so I'm looking for the gifts in that. Um, it's like every moment's a surprise right now, every moment. So, trying to stay light about the surprises. Hmm. I'm really struck and moved by the, this idea of the thread. I'll, I'll use that metaphor, the thread of music reaching through the windows to people that you know, I just thought that image of the power of music for you and then you offering it as a gift and then it wafting over people and what a, and again, it's, it's bizarre because you can't see them. It's bizarre time. We can't interact, but then there is this interaction that happens and I don't know, I'm just really struck by the gift of that. And, 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 and this time, I've just been thinking a lot about how this time we are reinventing other ways of connecting. Yeah. Like I think about <laughs> lately, I've been heartened by the idea that human beings have um, survived. We, we survived the ice age as a species. You know, we're really adaptable. Yeah. So I'm like thinking we're going to adapt to this, and what what creative ways are we going to adapt? And when I think of you doing this concert outside the the memory care place, and that's an adaption. That's like okay, how do I connect with music in a different way? Um, and I'm just touched by that. That's, yeah. Yeah, we are adaptable. Um, you know, it's interesting about this, this whole, I, I, I want to call it physical distancing. My husband and I are talking about physical distancing as opposed to social distancing, um, whatever you call it. But the music, you know, you can, you can sing and, and, you know, we, we had our sound equipment. So we were able to like blast the side of the building. You know, I mean, music can travel far yeah. and it travels to our core. And, um, I mean, I, you know, my mind's wandering to all these different ideas. I want to go like hop in the back of the pickup truck and like stand in the parking lot of the grocery store and just sing to the parking lot. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, yesterday just made me want to go, you know, drive around town in the pickup truck and, you know, go by buildings and just, you know, just sing, go through neighborhoods. Maybe I will. I don't know. But um, nothing, nothing has forced me to like, you know, and nothing has forced us to adapt and like adjust and like, and look inward. I mean, today I was restless because I was like sitting with myself and I just didn't want to. It's just like my whole family was out of the house and I like had to go next door and see the neighbors. Cause I, instead of feeling less like, Oh, the, you know, the house, our little house is quiet. And I was like, I just wanted more people because, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It's an interesting time.
Is there anyone else that would like to add their voice to um, where we are? Yeah, uh, Shannon. I've been doing pretty well the first couple of weeks was a lot of turmoil. And I think that was mostly related to the nonprofit that I work at and how devastating this was for them. Um, there was a turning point the, the Friday before the stay at home order and I was, I was going on a walk and this message just came to me so clearly because I had been concerned about the world and how fast it was going. We were just speeding up. It was becoming more complex. And the message that came to me was that the world needed to shake up and that we're all going to be better off on the other side of this. And that really helped me to think about this differently and to enjoy the gifts and to enjoy this time where we can slow down and simplify. Um, I went on a walk around my neighborhood. I see parents playing ball with their kids. I feel like I haven't seen that since I was growing up. And there, there are a lot of gifts and, the other thing that I've been getting out of this um, is giving myself permission to enjoy little, to enjoy the gifts, even in the midst of all the suffering that's going on. Because I think I had a tendency before to not allow myself to enjoy life because of all the suffering that I saw in the world. And this is teaching me that it doesn't do anyone any good for me to, you know, watch the news and go into this depression or dark place. Like it, it serves everyone better if I can, you know, keep my energy up and shine my light. And um, so that's what I've been doing. And I'm just, I don't know how long this is gonna last, but it, I definitely am getting some benefits from this time. Mm. Yeah, Lori. Hi, um, I'm an essential. So my life hasn't changed terribly since the onset of COVID. But I agree with Shannon. What I have noticed is families are together and kids are home with mom and dad. And I've noticed with my own two granddaughters, they're much calmer. They get along better. They just seem to have decompressed from the stress of going to school and Girl Scouts and mom and dad. Also, you know, my daughter-in-law's business is closed down. She's a hairstylist. My son is working from home and they're playing games. And like Shannon said, I see people outside all the time. Everyone's lawn is mowed. There's no traffic. Kids are playing in the street because there's no traffic. It does remind me of when I was growing up, things were much slower and calmer and it, it takes me back to that time. And I've actually like really enjoyed this time, maybe in a weird way and I hate to say that, but I think it's actually done a lot for me even though I still have to go to work every day. I just feel a sense of calm and I'm not, quite sure what to make of that. But, and, and I will be glad when things are back to normal because I know people are suffering. Um, but there's also something very sweet about it. And I'm looking forward to hearing all the stories and research and documentaries that come out afterward to hear the stories of the good parts about it and what we've learned from it. I think we have a lot to learn from slowing down and just enjoying the small things in life. It's really interesting. I, I hear this theme and I've been hearing it a lot with my clients too, the, this how to hold the idea that horrific things are happening right now, right? People are dying, people are sick, people are dying alone. I mean, there's a lot of suffering as a rod of this virus, right? It's out there. Um, and like I've had several clients say, you know, the pace of what's happening now, the slowing down, it kind of suits me. It's kind of more right for me. And then I think maybe, maybe as human beings, we're more suited to a slower pace and, and our, our, we've been speeding up so much and that's not really in tune with how we're supposed to live. 
And I've noticed with my family, I just have had these really sweet moments with my daughters, you know, that are like last night, we just had a moment with the four of us. And I was thinking, I'm so lucky to, and, and I have a sense that there's some openness that's happening and a stressful, a stress shedding that allows us to connect more deeply at times and to touch that joy. And at some point in this process, and I really like what you said, Shannon, I made a stance. I said, okay, I'm going to take a stance, a warrior stance for joy. Like if this virus gets me, I want to go out cradled by joy, right? I don't want to go out like, you know, and that's, and I want to go out whenever, whenever I go out, virus, hopefully the virus doesn't get me and I live a long life. But I think there's a something about that stance for joy that I hear and what you said, Shannon, that I really like, and I think I'm deepening in this, this process of the virus, you know? Um, so I don't know, it's interesting. And I think the offering I have tonight is going to be about like really about just holding it all, making space for all of our experiences, like the joy and the celebration and the goodness of some that's happening and the horror and the suffering and the restlessness and the missing people. And it's, there's a lot that's happening right now. And how do we make space in our hearts for all of it? You know, and I think that's, I guess that's my work both personally and professionally, how to welcome it all, you know. Um, so, so is there anything else that anyone wants to share? I know Carol, you haven't spoken yet and you don't have to, just want to make sure that everyone has space to speak if they want to speak and but feel free not to if you don't want to or anyone else that has anything burning to say. Mark, I want to add this one thing it made me think of when um, Mary was talking about music. There was an article I read early on in Italy, uh, an article about Italy, and they were singing to each other from the windows. And I, I had a longing to experience that here and didn't know how to create that. Certainly not with my neighbors. I'd feel silly. And yet, <laughs> there is something about music that unites us and touches us at a deeper level. I just wanted to add that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I had a thought when you were sharing Mary that uh, I have this uh, mantra I say to myself sometimes when I'm with a, a difficult, um, difficult suffering with a client or, or in myself where there's no place that love can't reach. And then I had this image of like, music can be a wave that love rides. And I felt like the sense that it was love that was riding the music into the, into the, uh, that, that, uh, that facility, you know, and it just it touched me at the beauty of that idea that even in this, even in this um, situation where we're having separation, music can be a bridge between us and we can reach each other, other things too, but definitely I heard about the Italians singing to each other and I've heard about I have a friend who's a violinist and she's been playing online concerts um, and uh, yeah it's just it's pretty it's pretty amazing so um. if there's ever a time to for everybody to give themselves permission to find their voice this is a good time. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I would offer up, I, I just met a new neighbor the other day. And she said, oh, when, you know, when we hear you out front, like we open our windows and because um, I practice outside a lot and it's been so beautiful. Um, or I'll see people walk by and they'll kind of slow their pace down, but they don't want me to think so people are it's you know it's like they're trying to respect my privacy I don't know it's interesting but but I said hey you know I said it is never too late to start learning an instrument and but just to let yourself sing is uh yeah like that's I if I could grant permission I mean it's I it, it's such a force and so cathartic and everyone has a voice to share and they're all unique. So Kimberly, if you can find that favorite song and just belt it out, people will slow down and listen and you'll make them smile because that's what it's all about. 
mm. for me. Is that joy? Peace. Speaking of voices, I saw Carol unmute just a few moments ago. Did you want to join your voice? Um, yeah, I was just, I was thinking it's nice to hear all these positives because I think that I've just been sort of, I've been in a funk, you know, like my anxiety has been through the roof and it's, you know, it's hard to kind of be calm. So I've been trying to do more meditation. I've been bringing the kids in to do some family meditation, but um, I see a lot of, I, I guess, talking to other people, some friends and neighbors and friends from uh, on I'm from the East coast. Um, I've been hearing more anxiety versus um, calm and joy. And um, I'm among the people who've been laid off and that makes it, you know, a little bit more um, challenging, especially because my income is the only income in this house. And so, um, and I know talking to others, that's there too. So it's important for me to hear the positive because I feel like I have just been immersed <laughs> in like negative and anxiety and, you know, just kind of trying to bring myself back to, um, to just a little bit of peace has been difficult because I was just talking to a friend a couple days ago about I'm like I can't even start a new job because the kids are home from school and I can't not be here I've got to be here um so you know there's a lot of different thoughts going through my head and I'm so glad you spoke up because I feel like that's the whole thing all our voices all our experiences have got to be honored at this time and there's, there's, you know, there's joy I had last night with my kids, this, this sense of like possibility and opening connection. And there's, you know, I have clients that are losing their jobs and don't quite know what they're doing and they're scared and there's gotta be room. I, I really want to make space here and, and uh, everywhere for everyone's experience to be held. That's really, um, so I really appreciate you coming forward and saying, look, it's, it, I hear both the appreciation for hearing other types of experiences and I hear how hard this has been for you, you know, I hear that. Yeah, I wanted to jump off a high building when I found out schools were closed for the rest of the year. And then they're talking about how it might be disrupted at the beginning of next year. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I haven't heard that one yet, but that's like... <laughs> yeah, I read an article about that today and I was like, no! Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. So I, I wonder, Jendi, if um, if you want me to shift at this point into like maybe a little bit of an offering, or do you have something you'd like to do before then? I have nothing in mind besides being with you okay. on the receiving end. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So the the, the offering is pretty simple tonight. I I and it's already kind of happening. Like. I, I'm going to lead you in a little bit of meditation, but the meditation is going to be a self-compassion meditation. And the way I think of this is that everything you're feeling, um, I'm going to help you welcome and not fight. Because I do think there's a sense of like, I've heard both, even in this conversation we just had, I heard people say, I feel joy and I feel a little guilty about that. Maybe I shouldn't be feeling joy or I feel nervous that everyone else is talking about being joyful and maybe, uh, and maybe I should be more joyful or try to be. And my sense of all of this is that the best way to meet ourselves is to meet us and to meet the moment is to meet where we are and to open to where we are. Um, and to not, I mean, so much of, uh, it seems like so much of our training is about being at war with ourselves or the moment. And I'm so much of what I stand for, I think, is let's make peace with ourselves in the moment. There's nothing wrong with any of us and there's nothing wrong with the moment. So it's sometimes I'm pleasant, but sometimes it's pleasant, but there's nothing wrong. I think, I think about this, that there's 13.8 billion years of evolution went into creating this moment. 
you know, and then I think about maybe it doesn't need my help to help it improve. Maybe I can receive and accept it and allow it to move through me. Um, so I really, what I would like to do is, is, um, is lead you in a little meditation about self-compassion, where I really invite you to just make peace with the experience you're having. And the amazing thing is that um, when I've noticed, when I accept who I am, <laughs> Like instead of thinking, I should be better, I should be better, I should be a better speaker, I should be leading this, this whatever I'm doing tonight should be better, or, or I should be a better therapist or a better parent, or whenever I do that, nothing changes, I just get, I feel yucky. When I accept myself, when I love myself for where I am, then there's room for shifts. You know, then, you know, I think Jack Hornfield is a meditation teacher talked about like, you know, oh, I spent my whole life trying to change myself. And then at some point I just accepted myself for who, who I am. And then I changed. Um, so this whole idea that I have to make myself a project. And right now there's so much of that. It's like, because I feel like, oh, I'm anxious. I shouldn't be anxious. Or and I've heard the other thing, as I said, I'm joyful. And somehow that's wrong. I feel guilty for being joyful because I'm having a good day, even though there's the virus and people are dying, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, how do we just make space for where we are and who we are and just like um i don't know i feel like if we treated our children or, or our friends the way we treat ourselves like somehow we wouldn't have very many friends and our children wouldn't be very happy so i'm really like wanting to invite all of you to just like um make space for where you are um so with that in mind i'd love to just invite you if you feel comfortable to close your eyes just you can close your eyes or just rest your eyes somewhere um, in front of you and find a comfortable seat where you're supporting your back but you're rested you're restful and at first i just want you to arrive in the moment just allow yourself to find your seat to land in your seat. And maybe to anchor yourself by paying attention to the breath. Just noticing the rise and the fall of the breath in the belly. So that as you breathe, you know you're breathing. And in that process of paying attention to the breath, focusing on the breath, maybe you will arrive more deeply into this moment into presence. And your mind is going to wander because that's what minds do. So when you notice that your mind wanders and thinking about something else, just let go, come back to the breath. And then I just want you to notice what you're feeling right now. Maybe you can pay attention to your heart or your belly, which is where we often feel our feelings. And maybe you're feeling something really pleasant. Maybe you're feeling something really unpleasant or painful. But whatever it is, just first notice it. Become aware of what is happening. This is what's happening right now. And then once you recognize what is happening, you're aware of it. 
See if you can allow it to be just as it is. And that might look like giving it a little bit of space internally. It might look like just softening a little bit, inviting your body or your heart to soften. Just allowing, making space, letting go of any need to fix it or fight it. I begin to notice where you predominantly feel it in your body. And you might notice how it changes as you give it space and as you pay attention to it. And then I want to you to see if you can bring a kind of friendliness to it. If it's something pleasant, just be happy for the part of you that is feeling joy or pleasantness. And if it's something painful or unpleasant, then meet it with love. Meet it with kindness, with softness. Meet it like you might meet a child who's waking up from a nightmare in the middle of the night and is scared. Sweetheart, sweetheart you could say to yourself, of course you're scared and it's okay. So whatever you're experiencing, just welcoming it, letting it know that it belongs, it, just ha it has a place inside of you. And really seeing if you can sink into a sense that there's nothing wrong with your experience right now. Conditions are coming together to give rise to this moment, to this experience. And you're simply meeting that experience with awareness, with kindness, with love. And maybe you can even go a bit further and sense into an experience of knowing there's nothing wrong with you right now. You're human, you're flawed, you're perfectly imperfect, you're imperfectly perfect. And at least for a moment, can you make space for the fullness of your humanity? And maybe underneath all the biography and story and events and things that have happened to you in your life, maybe you can touch that essence, that, that light that luminous heart, the way you were fresh from birth. And again, no forcing. If you don't, if you can't connect with that goodness at the core of your being, then be with what is can't do this wrong. All you're doing is making space for your experience. And everything your experience is welcome. And 
And then just taking a moment to just notice the effect of paying attention to yourself in this way, to bringing this kind of intention to accept yourself as you are and accept the moment as, you, as it is. How that's affected you, if at all. How you may or may not feel different than when you first closed your eyes. And maybe as an intention for the future, for the moment later tonight, tomorrow, next week, next month, maybe setting an intention that as you experience whatever it is that you experience in this process we're all in, setting an intention that you're going to meet it with acceptance and kindness and maybe love as best you can. There's no place inside of you that isn't worthy of love. And there's no place inside of you that can't be reached by love. And then slowly, gently, finding your way back into the room you're in, the metaphoric room we're all in, maybe feeling the room around you, the seat underneath you, noticing the vast silence around you and the noise and sounds that fill that silence, or orienting yourself again to the place and time you're in, and whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes and take the world in again and just notice that transition point, that state shift as your eyes open again. There was more time. I would love to hear how that was from all of you. I don't know. I think I'm going to turn this over to Jendi and just let her decide um, how you want to bring this to a close. I know we're close to time here. I'm also just really um, just curious where people are right now. So I don't know if that's something we have time for or not. Sure, I think it's lovely to hear how that was for maybe a person or two. I'll just say as, a, as an offering, I, <laughs> so interesting when I go in this place, I feel this sense of like, I so much want you all that I don't know. I mean, I know Jenny and Kimberly, but I don't know you, but I have this deep sense. I want everyone to love themselves and stop being so hard on themselves. I just have this sense of like, and so um, Tara Brock talks about the trance of unworthiness that we seem to be caught in. And I want everyone to wake up from the trance of unworthiness and see how lovely they are. And I see, you know, my clients, I mean, we're so lovely, everyone. And so when I, when I touch that in me and then I say those words, that, that's the, the wish. And I just, I want everyone to see how beautiful they are. I feel tenderness around that. Mark, I always love listening to you. Um, I don't, I'm not going to go too into it, but I want to share that I did have an aha moment, um, something I'm struggling personally with myself, and I was able to touch that young, innocent, bright spirit mm. and was reminded 
to, to that 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 place can be loved too. So being really calm. I thought I was calm before, but I'm really calm now and have a new perspective how to come at this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm just feeling a lot lighter and uh, I really forgot. I know about self-compassion, but I not been doing that so well lately at all. And uh, <laughs> I'm feeling a lot, uh, I'm feeling really grateful because I'm like, oh yeah, that's what that feels like. And uh, it's a really good feeling. And I feel like there's more of me to go around now than there was like an hour ago. So, yeah. That's the beauty of this, that as we give this to ourselves, we have more to give others. Mark, thank you so much for leading us through all of that. The evening has been spectacular and sweet. Thank you for being willing to do this tonight. Yeah, thanks for giving of me. yourself. Mm -hmm. And I'm so delighted to hear everyone's voice who wanted to come in and share what was going on for you and the variety of responses made my experience feel quite relatable. Like I could relate with Mary with what you're saying and Kimberly and Shannon and Lori and Carol, it, you know, I felt all of that within myself. Sometimes in one moment, I have felt, it feels like all of that. So all of your voices have been such a gift to me, feeling really connected to the collective we in this world, honestly. We're all in this right now, or that's what it feels like to me in this moment. So Mark, thank you for bringing that collective we here. Ah, we could do this for another three hours and I wouldn't be tired, but at last it's time to close. So I um, have one poem to end with by Hafiz. The place where you stand right now, God circled on a map for you. So thank you everyone so, so much for coming. Um, I will be here next week. We may or may not have a guest. It's a wild card. If we do have a guest, it's really good. <laughs> but I can't stay yet. So I will be here if we don't have a guest. Uh, and then the week after that, we have a local acupuncturist and Chinese medicine um, gal coming and she is a beast of, of awesome. Uh, so that will be happy. She will be coming in a couple of weeks. So thank you so much for making time tonight and I wish you all well. And Mark, thank you so much again. Pleasure. Thank you all to be with you. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>